Greetings, demons, and welcome to Warhammer Weekly, episode 30. So, this is, once again, a little bit of a quieter week, slightly more to talk about than last week, but in any case, we're going to get straight into my pickups for the week, which isn't too much, and then we'll get straight into the topics. Not the leader of a cult. And so for pickups, I didn't actually get that much this week, or rather, I got one order of things. And uh, you can kind of already see it in the top right, but I did get a bunch of Tau stuff. So obviously all this is outdated now, it's all for previous editions, but I was like, you know what, I'll pick them up, I'll have a read through them. The lore is the main reason I'd pick up an index anyway, especially an outdated index. But uh, yeah, we got the date cards from last edition for the Tau Empire. Which, you know, is cool, but nothing too special. I also got the Tactical Objectives. I don't know which edition this is. Uh, it might be 8th, I'm not actually sure. Um, 2014, so that might be 7th, actually. Uh, but yeah, just something that was included in the lot. I don't really care too much about it. Uh, because the main reason I wanted all this was because... We had things like Index Xenos 2, which comes with the Tau, Orcs, Terranus, and Gene Steel Cut. Which, the fact that comes with... Um, well, I mean, technically, I, I do uh, collect all those armies. Orcs is just the lesser of those. Um, but yeah, great index to get from, I believe, 7th edition. Uh, we also have Shadow War Armageddon, which um, I don't really know when this came out. So let's actually have a look. Does it say in the information anywhere? Hmm, maybe not. Uh, well, anyway... That's uh, Shadow War Armageddon, very good. Uh, Armageddon's the entire storyline with like Gazgul and stuff, so pretty cool there. Um, we have Stronghold Assault, which once again, don't know which edition this is from. Does it say... no. Hmm, that's, that's a shame that none of these actually have the dates on them, but yeah, Stronghold Assault seems interesting. Um, we have the Core Manual for Kill Team, I think this is Core Team 2019? Maybe, I think. <laughs> Once again, it's not going to say it, is it? No, no, it's not. But, uh, yeah, Kill Team Core Manual. And then the actual things. Obviously, we already saw the Index uh, Xenos 2. The main reason, though. Planetary Onslaught. Look at that cover. I do really love that cover. Um, Once again, don't know what it actually... Uh, which edition it's for, but, yeah. Planetary Onslaught looks amazing. And then the two uh, more... Uh, Codex, or I'll call them indexes. We have Codex Tau Empire, and this one I believe is 8th edition. Uh, I could be wrong once again, probably am. But uh, yeah, Codex Tau Empire looks amazing. Can't wait to read through that a little bit for the lore. And then we also have Tau Empire Codex once again. This one I believe is 8th edition. And uh, yeah, just a lot of Tau books and Tau memorabilia and other um, core books and stuff. I've got a feeling that whoever was selling these has just had enough of 40k, probably built a lot of Tau and just got bored of it, but uh, yeah, one loss is my gain, and uh, yeah, I now have a lot of Tau books, so very, very neat, but uh, yeah, we'll just get straight into topics, because that, that's literally all I picked up this week. <laughs> and starting out with the topics, we have a brand new collaboration between Weta Workshops and Warhammer themselves, and... This is pretty interesting. We don't actually know too much in terms of details here, but we do know we're going to be getting some one sixth scale premium statues by Weta. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Hopefully, they stay a bit all over the place. They do a little bit of everything rather than what usually happens, which is it's all 40k or it's all Horus Heresy. Or have we even had anything really uh, merchandise wise for AOS? I don't really know. But. Yeah, hopefully we get a little bit of everything, maybe a Stormcast, maybe a Space Marine, um, and then just, like, some other cool different things. Naldari, a, uh, a Tau would be really cool. Like, getting a statue of a Tau would be really nice. Um, maybe even, like, a bust of, like, major characters or something like that. Like, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm really hoping that this is a very varied collection and not just something where it's like, oh, here's, you know, an Ultramarine, here's... I don't even know, like, you know, just generic things. I hope that they actually vary out quite a lot and we actually do get some decent variety here. But, uh, yeah, right now we just have a bit of a trailer just showing off what uh, people at Weta Workshop, Weta Workshop actually think of Warhammer, how much they like it, how, what they like about Warhammer. And, uh, yeah, an announcement that we're getting one sixth scale collectibles. And, uh, 
yeah, in the article itself, it does specify premium statues, which is what Weta does, so I'm not really surprised. A few people are thinking we might end up getting, just due to the wording of it in the video, maybe some 1-6 scale replica weapons, maybe like a bolt gun or something, which would be really cool. If they actually go that route rather than what I'm thinking, which is more, you know, busts of characters, I honestly think that'd be really cool. I'd love to have a 1-6 scale bolter just to put in my background um, or whatever else. Just, just that'd be a really, really cool thing to have. So, you know, hopefully we get a bit of a variety there. But yeah, Weta Workshop, Weta Workshop, I don't actually know how it's pronounced. Um, we're in collaboration with Warhammer and in collaboration with Games Workshop. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool collaboration there. So hopefully we get more information about this soon. Maybe a few teasers of what we're actually going to be getting. But uh, yeah, in any case, very, very cool to see more collaborations coming to Warhammer. And it seems as this week we don't actually have any 40k news, which, you know, isn't really surprising. We had a lot of it for a long time. Moving over straight to Heresy Thursday, put loyalist weaklings to the sword with the traitor champion console. And yet, yeah, that's right, another character for specifically traitors, which is kind of cool enough itself. And it is the champion, the champion console. And this guy looks excellent. Um, this is the first time I've properly looked at it. Obviously, I've, I've looked at the pictures a little bit um, in advance of the video, but yeah, this is the first time properly looking, and he looks absolutely fantastic. The sword is excellent. The Volkite um, pistol or Volkite rifle, whatever it is, I think it's a pistol, looks excellent. Just overall, the entire look of it, the helmet is excellent. Uh, even the the partial helmet, like the rebreather, he rebreather head, Looks really good. It's not a head that I'll go for personally, but definitely a cool aesthetic there. I really like the knightliness of the um, full helmet. I, I quite like the grill design on that. And just general, like, if it wasn't for all of the, you know, Horus Eye of Terror imagery, and I'm sure, like, technically you could paint it up as Lunar Wolves and it would technically still be correct. Like, there's so much going on here that would just make it so good for for my, my army. Like, I already have a few Horus models in my Death Watch that I use as like captains and lieutenants and stuff. This guy would be really cool to use as just another captain or another lieutenant. I'm not sure which base size he's actually on, but he looks awesome. He looks honestly excellent. And uh, yeah, the fact he has the Volkite rifle is or Volkite pistol, whichever, is just really cool to me. I, I just like the aesthetic of it. It's a weapon we don't see much um, outside of Horus Heresy, so getting one in plastic is always nice. I think there is an upgrade sprue that actually has them, but, uh, yeah, just having more options for that is always great. The backpack, the, um, yeah, the, the backpack, I'm not, I'm not going to change my wording there, looks really interesting. It has, like, exhaust ports on the side rather than the typical, well, I guess they are still exhaust ports, but rather than the typical, like, balls, it has, like, engine thrusters, which is really interesting. A lot of cabling and stuff, just a very interesting model, and, uh, Honestly, I, I'm probably going to pick this up. I don't know if I'll pick it up at full price, but uh, yeah. Is it resin or is it plastic? I believe it might actually be plastic. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, it is Forge World. It, 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 in the last line. I, I thought this was plastic. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, either way, I will probably get this. Um, I'm going to try and get a discount somewhere, but not many places do Forge World stuff at a discount. But uh yeah, this looks excellent, honestly. I, I'm really looking forward to getting this um, in hand at some point, because it, it does look absolutely great. The Volkite is great. The uh, the sword looks, I would say, just excellent. Just overall, a great model. An absolutely great model. But uh, yeah, enough gushing over the uh, the champion console. Let's let's move on to the next topic. Sticking with Horacy... Horacy? With Horus Heresy, with uh, 30k, we've got more Legion's Imperialis information, and this time it's not about new models, or not specifically, it's about how terrain's going to be working. Uh, there's three different types of terrain that they list, difficult terrain, obstructing terrain, and dangerous terrain, which is pretty um, pretty neat that we've actually got three different types of major terrain. There's also uh, the list impassable terrain, structures, obstacles, that kind of stuff, like there's a lot of interesting little aspects um, that should go over some of the um, terrain that's going to be included in the starter box, which is pretty cool. I do really like the look of a lot of it. And uh, yeah, in general, it's, it's good that obstructing terrain includes ruins, which is always good. Dif difficult terrain is mostly just destroyed structures. And 
yeah, I, I assume when it comes to the structures, we already know the, that with titans and knights, you can destroy buildings. So I'm assuming anything that has the structure keyword is going to be destroyable. Uh, anything that's an obstacle is just something that blocks you either temporarily until it's destroyed or fully. And then impassable terrain is something that literally cannot be destroyed, cannot be, you know, walked over, cannot be done anything with. You have to go around it, which uh, that kind of terrain piece could could become really interesting in a fight, especially if uh, you make most of the terrain impassable. That would be really interesting. Just have a lot of small uh, obstructing terrain and then just a bunch of impassable terrain. That would be really interesting for a board. But yeah, overall, it's just interesting. I'm looking forward to um, actually seeing the board designs that people are going to go with, whether they're going to go with proper cityscapes or whether they're going to go for something a little bit more... Um, I don't really know, a little, a little bit more 40k, you know, where it's just kind of sporadic, just things thrown everywhere, just, I don't know, for me, I I like the uniformity, like building a little city just to, you know, destroy it with your knights, but, uh, or your titans, I guess, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting, definitely, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually getting some of this train in hand, I'm definitely going to be getting Starbucks for uh, Imperialis, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually getting some of this, painting it up. I'm probably not going to go with the white aesthetic that they've gone with um, for all theirs. But uh, for all games, games workshops, heavy metal team, whatever. But uh, yeah, it all looks great. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to testing out some different styles, stuff like that. I'm definitely going to make it a little bit more Georgian compared to the uh, the Greek design that they've gone with. I, I'm, I'm saying that as a vague like statement of, of design, but... Uh, yeah, it all looks great. I'm looking forward to the terrain, and the terrain rules look pretty fun. So, uh, yeah, just more stuff to look forward to with Imperial Alice. And moving over into Age of Sigma, we have the Seek Tame Slay, the Vulcan Flame Seekers Warband. And, uh, yeah, these are some great dw uh, Dwarden. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't really say too much about them. The normal Fire Slayers are pretty boring they all kind of look the same and that's a really unfortunate part of them because i like dwarves especially in fantasy i really like dwarves but uh yeah for the longest time they have not exactly been the most ideal um units to buy because they are just all the same thing including like the main box of them is like just it's it's four sets of the same five um poses i'm pretty sure something like that so it's not really worth it unless you really like those poses. But uh, yeah, a new warband means new sculpts. We also have some female Dwarden, which is really, really cool. Some varying different designs for hair, for beards, for um, helmet, helmets and stuff. Like They've all pretty much got the mohawk. Some of them don't, but most of them have still got the mohawk. But uh, at the same time, they've changed up how they're doing it. The design's a little bit different. Um, there's some fully, like... There's some interesting Dwarden. There's one that uh, doesn't have the mohawk at all, has the braided beard, and then just shirtless. And I know shirtlessness is a, is a pretty common thing for them, but it's just it's such a weird combo of aesthetics, especially with the little dragon head thing. Uh, you also get one of the mythical creature things. This one's a lava lava monster, which is pretty cool. Um, Chain whip guy is always nice to have with his little his shoulder mounted some dragon eggs. I don't know. Um, but yeah, overall, just some very nice models, and yeah, overall, the aesthetics are great. Um, the guy with the whip actually has a little, like, cape that has the design of the lava monster that you get included. Just some just some really great designs overall, and honestly, if I'm going to pick up some Dwarden anytime soon, might be these guys. I do quite like my Warcry warbands, as much as I don't really like the game Warcry, um, as much as, say, Underworlds. Yeah, th these warbands are always great, and uh, yeah, all being well, this is a good sign for the future of the Fire Slayers. Hopefully we'll get a bit of a range refresh, not a full range refresh, but just something that gives them a little bit more character, a little bit more variety. The fact that we're seeing female Dwarden is great. Uh, hopefully we see more of that in the future, more variety in terms of genders, and as well, something that a lot of people have pointed out, the original Fire Slayers, the box, is all painted to be white, you know, they're all pale-skinned um, Dwarden. It's really nice that they've actually got a variety of skin tones in this. And, you know, obviously, it's Dwarden. You can kind of just paint them however you want, and they won't look out of place. 
but it's nice that heavy metal team are actually painting them with a bit of variety now, which is definitely over, over, uh, over, over, it's taking too long, that's what I'm trying to say, but, um, yeah, just some very nice ward in, I love the little fire dog thing, and, uh, yeah, just, just more great stuff for, uh, for Warcry, which always tends to get the best, the best models for AOS, and that's saying something, because AOS models are great, but, uh, yeah, very, very cool. And that brings us to the last topic for the week, which I said at the start this was a slightly longer week. We had one extra topic compared to last week, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, the rumor engine for the 12th of September. And uh, it it's a sword. This one really doesn't have anything to say about it. It's, it's probably AOS just due to the stylization of it. It's not specifically... It's definitely not chaos. It's definitely not destruction. You know, it's a bit too clean for those. But, you know, what this actually is, whether it's Elven, whether it's, you know, something Cities of Sigma or something like that, um, I couldn't tell you. I honestly couldn't tell you. It's completely possible this could be for 40k, and this is actually, like, you know, something to do with maybe Ka- uh, Ka- Kafrin, Ka- Ka-chan, Ka-chan. Uh, maybe it's a Kachan weapon or something like that. That's definitely possible. Um, it could even be, this is a, a real stretch of the imagination, but this could be a weapon, a melee weapon for the Tau. It kind of has that slight anime aesthetic to it, so maybe, but I I really do just doubt it. And uh, yeah, there's not much to say about it. It's got like the serrated edge, it's got like the little grabby section on the back of it. I don't really know what else to say about it, but yeah, it's a sword. I'm sure the model that it's going to be attached to is going to be great. But uh, yeah, that is really everything to go over for this week. So, on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like it, subscribe for new on and ring that bell so you never miss upload. Otherwise, comment below any thoughts, feelings about anything of that we've talked about in this episode. Um, I'm especially interested in t- hearing what people think of the new Dwarden aesthetic, the new Dwarden design for Fire Slayers. And, uh, yeah, also, what do you think we're going to get from Weta? I, as I say, I'm leaning towards it's going to be a lot of busts um, of various characters from 40k, maybe some AOS, and maybe some 30k as well, but uh, realistically, it could be anything. We don't really know the details right now, and uh, yeah, just generally, I'm I'm hoping for the best with it. But in any case, that's gonna be it from me. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and uh, yeah, bye. Look at the screen, you'll be fine. Cultures of the same, but worlds divide. I just wanna tell.